Good morning. This is Wednesday, August 17 at 9 a.m. The Clark County Council is ready to begin the council time agenda. We start with public comment. If there is any, and this is on agenda items only, the agenda for the council time agenda today. Uh, do you see anyone in the hearing room, staff, or online who wishes to comment? Here, uh, there's nobody in the hearing room, and um, let me put the instructions up. I'm sorry, I didn't get those up, just in case. Yeah, press star three, raise your hand if you're calling in, and the raised hand icon on your computer or tablet. Chair, I don't see anybody raising their hand, so. Okay, thank you for checking. Under old business, is there a motion for mi approval of the minutes of August 10? A motion to approve Mot the minutes. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It Aye. is unanimously approved. New business? Is there any? No? None. Councilor None reports. Morning. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could just spend a minute just to kind of bring this up. Once again, I, I mentioned it yesterday and I appreciate uh, the vote on rural uh, broadband. It's a good start. Uh, what I've uh, asked Lindsay to help with, you know, we have this new, well, I'll call it a new commerce initiative through WSU Extension Service. And I did a uh, talk to uh, one of the leaders of WSU and they're still hiring people. I mean, they're, they're a long way off um, and it's, they probably shouldn't have done their press release so early, but uh, the issue is they are on a, an extremely short timeline to get this planning money, identify plans for rural uh, broadband underserved people. Um, so in, in any case, I just want to get to the point of what I, I, I called at least uh, one of the ports, Camus Washougal, to try to uh, talk with the other ports, because uh, the ports all have initiatives right now on rural broadband, but they are mainly in the planning stages. Uh, additionally, we know Comcast has um, their own plans. Perhaps they're confidential, perhaps not, but at least the one that's public is the one we're joining in. Uh, Noctel and some other providers also may have their own individual plans. What I'd really like to do, Kathleen, and, and for the rest of the council, is get together uh, someone from Public Works and then a representative uh, from these providers and talk about perhaps putting together a uh, at least a first attempt at a strategic plan for Clark County uh, because it would be so timely uh, to present to Commerce uh, through WSU Extension the bottom line here is all the federal money in this area will primarily be funneled through this program, through Commerce and the WSU Extension. So if we can come up and be a leader in showing, hey, we're, we're committed, here's our plan, we're ready for your grant money. Um, uh, it would be a way ahead and we're on a short timeline. So I'm hoping we can get some support and at least put together this little uh, group uh, to see if we can join together and just come up with a, a PowerPoint presentation of what we need in Clark County uh, for our underserved uh, neighborhoods. Noted, thank you. Other reports from council? It looked, uh, Kathleen, like you were going to say something. <laughs> Um, if if this is the desire of the council, um, we can certainly have a conversation with Public Works. The one caution I, and the reason why I want to talk to them is that you know they're struggling right now to hire engineers and staffing. So I you know just based on that, but I'll be I'm more than happy to talk to Public Works and bring back potential options for the council next week. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention that yesterday when. 
uh, last night, actually, when we were talking about ARPA funds for small business, one of the things that Mark Gassaway uh, had put in writing and, and mentioned to us is uh, that there is a small business grant schedule that has been announced starting last night at the state level. And here's the information on that. The Washington State Legislature appropriated $70 million, and that is a lot of um, money for this next round, which is round five of the small business grants. We, we don't know, of course, that any will come to Clark County, but it surely won't unless we have some good applicants come forward. So that's what uh, we're making this announcement for to encourage that. Uh, the application portal is going to remain open for 24 days from, from today. And it's a simple uh, URL to remember, commercegrants.com, HTTPS, commercegrants.com. Check it out for all of you small businesses that um, could use some uh, extra uh, funds from the state at this time. Are there other councilor reports? Madam Chair? Yes, Councilor Olson. Uh, just want to let folks know that um, Titan Van Coog is blooming. So if you're not familiar with Titan Van Coog, it, uh, Van Coog, it is the uh, corpse plant over here at uh, Washington State University in Vancouver. It is blooming. It will bloom for 24 hours. Um, it's open today from 8 until 7 p.m. tonight to view. And once it blooms, it dies. And it smells like um, dead bodies. So it's a sight to see last year. <laughs> last year, um, there were 20,000 people that uh, came up to the campus to see its cousin. So uh, if people are out and about today, um, I would recommend they take a stop by and, and take a look at this thing. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Um, I walked up there this morning and there are a few people already there uh, this morning taking a look at it. So um, it's, a, it's a unique and interesting uh, Entity, I don't know what to call it. It reminds me of something out of uh, Little Shop of Horrors. It's big. It's like 70 some inches tall. So anyway, if you're out and about, go take a look. Thanks. Was its aroma already developing? So I couldn't smell it. I was pretty close to it, but I was talking with Mel Netzhammer this morning and um, there are flies flying around it this morning and there weren't last year with the other plants. So he's not, they're not quite sure what the difference is, but uh, okay. it will be smelling. So this morning, the, the bottom part is starting to expand, but later tonight it will completely open and uh, then you'll start to get more of the, the odors uh, from the plant. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> Thank you for that detail. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Are there other counselor reports? Chair. Okay, hearing none, Chair. we'll go to, I'm sorry. Chair, hi. Yes, <laughs> Councilor Lance. Yes, thank you. Um, This is a, a a, a, a question. Um, we received some emails from a constituent who was wondering about uh, campaign signs. Um, and well, the tone of the emails was perhaps not the most productive. Uh, I, I, I concur with some of his concerns and, and we hear this, you know, political signs. Speech are a part of are a part of our landscape and everybody sort of grudgingly accepts them to varying degrees. But, and there are regulations for every jurisdiction, including unincorporated Clark County uh, to manage those signs. Uh, and generally there is a 10 to 15 day period after a campaign in which the candidates uh, who are not moving forward or at the end of campaign season uh, are asked to remove their signs. And we do see every year that many, many candidates are incredibly diligent about getting their signs down in the right amount of time some aren't and my question is uh per, a, a question to go back to staff if council has any interest in talking about this if we have the ability to apply any penalties to those who fail to follow the regulations we currently have regulations but uh there's no uh, recourse for those who don't follow them uh, and i don't know what our ability to apply any penalty is and i'm curious about that if there is any to maybe move that conversation forward to encourage folks to follow the rules and uh, get their signs down in a timely way. 
is there interest in uh, pursuing that by council? So I, let me just say yes and no. <laughs> you know, so many of these signs are in easements that don't belong to us, or they're in incorporated areas where we have no uh, regulation oversight, or they're on private property. Uh, it has been a problem, and they are are an eyesore. Uh, you know, so the I think the public is entitled to have them enforced. Uh, we have very little area where we can enforce and certainly very little capacity. You know, the real problem is with campaigns that get, you know, eliminated during the primary. You know, a lot of them are just roots based and have uh, volunteers and some of them are from out of our county. And then we see these sciences fall down and languish for so long. I mean, it would be good to have a discussion about what we can do with the incorporated areas to try to um, get responsibility for all the campaigns, even if they're completely volunteer based um, to comply with the, the codes, both in the cities and in the county. I think, you know, it, it is, it would be a worthy endeavor to at least pursue what can be done, done either through narrative or uh, joint work with the cities. Is there a third person who's interested in that discussion? Okay, I think we will not have that discussion at this time. One of the things that um, I've done just as a courtesy to the candidates, sometimes there is a uh, languishing uh, sign someplace out in the county and I'll um, drop the candidate an email and just say, as a courtesy, I wanted to let you know at this particular corner, one of your signs remains. And I've always gotten the reply back. Um, Thank you so much. I uh, did not know about that. And then it would be gone within a short period. So there are some um, simple things that I think we should keep in mind that we can uh, do also. Um, okay, anyway. Yeah, and that's your... I, uh, I, I would, uh, Council Lentz, can you re please repeat for me what exactly it is that you want us to do? I'm sorry. Currently, we have uh, guidelines with no enforcement. And uh, I'm curious to know what enforcement and or penalty possibilities exist for us. I certainly don't think that it ne necessitates a steep penalty. But for those who aren't timely in the removal, and I don't think this is about, um, you know, a, a yard size sign that got forgotten and, uh, you know, is, is lying there and we call someone to pick it up. This is when candidates leave and, and issue campaigns, leave their signs out in the public space for weeks and weeks on end after the campaign is concluded. And while most candidates and campaigns do not do that, some do. And so I'm interested in having a conversation around what, like, what penalties might be possible for us to impose and the parameters of those so that it isn't um, unnecessarily punitive. But typically, if a rule isn't enforced, people don't need to follow, feel they need to follow it. So, so, so I would be in favor of something. And I don't know that I, so I'm thinking. Ordinarily, our, our code enforcement process is we need to get a complaint and we did get a complaint, but it wasn't a specific complaint. So mm -hmm. the person didn't say this person's sign was up in this right of way and should have been taken down by now. So, um, so from a person who wants to report campaign signs or any other code enforcement violation, I think the process for us is tell us who the, who, who you're complaining, what the complaint is per se. And then we can address to Councillor Bowerman's point or Chair Bowerman's point, we, we can address that campaign. Um, if the signs are in the city limits of some other jurisdiction, the complaint would go to the city to enforce mm -hmm. there. So um, I, I think if we could do something, which would be maybe to put out a press release to say, get your campaign signs down. Um, and if you see them up, here's how, here's the phone number you call to make a code enforcement um, complaint. I, I would support something like that. And I think generally we don't go straight to the penalty. We go to the enforcement part mm -hmm. first, which is go take your sign down. So. Um, I, I could see something like that if we were to just make some sort of um, recommendation and reminder to folks to get their signs down. Madam Chair. 
Uh, Councilor Rylander. I think we're making a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, if nothing else, the elections department, who has a, I believe, a way to contact each of the candidates, could send out just as a matter of routine a reminder post primary, post election that these are the guidelines we'd like you to follow up. And by the time we get into setting up a complaint line or an email location, then we have to allocate somebody's time from the county to monitor that, go out and check on that, determine whether it has to be forwarded to a city or some other jurisdiction, et cetera. I, I just, my perception in all of my years is that yes, there are some that get left around but it's not a big enough deal to go down the path of identifying penalties per sign or, or whatever other punitive measures might be put into place. Uh, re respectfully, um, jumping to a complaint line and some huge uh, element of infrastructure and bureaucracy isn't really uh, a part of the conversation yet. Um, it's clear that there's um, minimal to no appetite for this, so uh, so be it. I think that you know, just as I said earlier, having uh, I, I think that what Councilor Olson suggested is fine. If there's a procedure and a process for it, no, we shouldn't jump immediately to penalty. There should be a communication process. Uh, but once again, um, rules without uh, uh, enforcement and boundary tend uh, to be disregarded. So. so I'm starting to hear a thread of agreement, Councillor Lentz. Uh, you know, I think everyone agrees they shouldn't be left up, and the public needs to be reminded. The campaign specifically need to be reminded. I I sense that we do have agreement that we should do something, um, and I agree we don't go right to fines. I mean, this is really information and. Again, I mean, I've been there and probably at least some of you have as well. You know, volunteers put these signs up. There's no central location for them. Campaigns don't even know where they are. And then, of course, once the if the campaign loses, then the volunteers kind of go away. Uh, so it's a struggle to get them down. Um, but we should do something. And again, I, I support joining with the with the cities and maybe as uh, Councillor Rylander just uh, mentioned maybe it is the uh, the auditor's office that should, should put the word out the campaigns reminding them of the individual city rules and the county rules and uh, ask that they be complied with at, at least as a minimal step. They are an eyesore and they're a hazard when they start blowing around. So, uh, th thank you for that. Can I um, to just help us move on? Can I? Uh, wrangle this into what I think is a suggestion and see if we have agreement on it. Um, I'm curious to know uh, from legal what our ability to impose any final penalty is. Just from a code enforcement perspective, what's our ability since I know signs also uh, are considered speech, like just is this, what 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 is our uh, field here? And then at the same future time that we get that information, some information from code enforcement. I, I presume it's code enforcement, but if it is somebody else, then please let us know uh, about how specific sign complaints within the county's jurisdiction are handled at this time. And we can go from there to see what is currently done and if there is anything that needs to change. I continue, I, I will maintain that having the threat of some penalty, even if it is down the line, is helpful to, uh, encourage people to follow guidelines. So, but that we, we there's information we need before we can even have that discussion. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think it's probably written in our code pretty clearly what the fine process is. So if we just wanna let people know what the, what the code says and if they don't comply, this is what could happen. I mean, and I, every city has a different- um, Well, currently with the sign regulations that are sent out, there's no penalty. There's a please take your signs down within 15 days and where you're not supposed to put them. Um, but so I'm curious what the process is and what our ability to impose any fines is. But Councilor Olson is correct that some of the jurisdictions have different approaches. Um, and I'm asking about Clark County. 
I, I well, if if you're <laughs> limiting it to unincorporated yeah. Clark County, then that's that's a limitation to specify. That's what I said at but, the beginning. Um, yeah. Does anybody have an interest in addition to Councillor Lentz in having a report like that, or are you satisfied with simply looking at the uh, regulations yourself? Yeah. So I'm. I'm happy to move forward to get some more detail on this and ultimately i think we would have a role to remind the cities that uh, these signs are not a good thing left up forever and um, maybe everybody needs to look at it uh, once again because man uh, you know these uh, graveyards of signs in some locations is is really a, a palpable eyesore so i think we should give it some attention and perhaps uh, what counselor Lentz has suggested a legal take a look at it and just see what the options are and what what's in, in existence right now. And okay, well, we can schedule that for an upcoming yeah. uh, work and session. To clarify, it was talking just about unincorporated Clark County, which is what I stated at the beginning. Since we have no jurisdiction over other cities, there'd be no reason to try to change their rules. Are there other counselor reports? Okay, hearing none, uh, we do have a work session request. Kathleen? Yes, uh, good morning. This is a request from the auditor's office. There's four annual reports that they come to council every year to provide a high level overview and look at some data points. I think some of the hard copies have already been distributed to some of the counselors. Uh, so they are requesting for one hour to come before council and just give a, um, an update on the four financial reports. Sounds good to me. Are there others who agree? I'm yes. seeing the three nods. So thank you. And we will schedule that. I saw the date of August 24 someplace. Is that the date it goes forward? They are asking for the 24th. We do have Board of Health that morning and another work session that morning. So we'll work with um, both work sessions to see when the best date will be for council. Okay, very good. Uh, Lindsay here, any policy issues to report on this morning? Just one quick thing, uh, mostly for the public that may be listening. Uh, the <clears throat> website for the Vancouver Lake consultant work is up and running on the council's webpage and they have a survey that's open and also their first initial uh, Zoom open house will be August 30th. So just a reminder for the council, if you wanna take a look at that and any members of the public that may wanna participate, that's it. Very good. Well, we are going to uh, move into executive session there are two um, sessions. One is regarding pending litigation on RCW 30110, section 1I, for about 15 minutes with potential action following uh, the, the session, and council will be present. In addition, there is one collective bargaining session for 10 minutes, and council will be present uh, for that uh, session as well. I anticipate uh, about 30 minutes. It was It's uh, 25 minutes for the sessions themselves. And by the time we get in and out of that, um, how about if we reconvene at uh, five before 10, 9.55. Is that right? I think so. Yes, okay. yes, that's correct. <laughs> Thank you, and we'll see you in executive session, counselors. Hello, this is to uh, let you know we'll be extending the executive sessions to 1010. Thank you. We are back in executive session on Wednesday, August 17. Uh, no, we are back out of executive session, um, having uh, uh, talked about some pending litigation and collective bargaining um, with the announcement made before during council time that there uh, would be potential action. And there is, is there a motion please? Uh, Madam Chair, I have a motion. 
I would move to allow the county manager to sign the opioid distributor settlement agreement. It's listed as uh, the AGO distributor agreement. Second. Discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um, and the nays, please. The vote was unanimous. It is unanimously passed. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, council time is now adjourned. <laughs>